uh, next hydraulic turbine that uh, we are going to look at is the filter wheel. Uh, you may recall that uh, uh, we have uh, already discussed this in the introductory part of the lecture. So let us uh, quickly uh, review what we uh, discussed and uh, move on to uh, learn more about this device and also do some uh, calculations involving the uh, machine. Uh, so the um, uh, the Pelton wheel has a runner on which are mounted uh, buckets, or the buckets are actually uh, shaped in the form of a cow, and uh, water from the nozzle or the water jet from the nozzle hits the uh, buckets, and the buckets actually turn the water around almost uh, through 180 degrees, and the resulting change in momentum on the water imparts uh, force on the uh, uh, force on the buckets and hence the runner and turns this around. This is coupled to an electric generator which is used for generating electricity. Now the water from the dam reservoir is uh, brought to a penstock uh, and then the penstock terminates in a nozzle. So the gravity head that is available uh, in the uh, reservoir is converted entirely into kinetic energy of the water. And the flow rate through the nozzle is uh, regulated by means of a spear, which looks like this. So uh, by moving the spear in or out, the flow rate may be decreased or increased. Uh, this is not the best way to regulate the flow rate because the losses uh, can be quite high, especially in low flow rates. So we will look at um, uh, much more efficient forms of uh, controlling the flow rate in the Pelton wheel in the next slide. Uh, the other important thing to be noticed in contrast to the Francis and the Kaplan turbine is that the in the Pelton wheel, the pressure remains constant. So when the water comes out of the nozzle, it comes out at atmospheric pressure, but at high speed. And hence the uh, entire casing uh, actually um, uh, need not be very thick because uh, the uh, pressure inside the casing is actually uh, atmospheric. So it need not withstand the uh, hydrostatic uh, stresses due to um, uh, due to the uh, gravity head in the dam, which actually can be quite high in the case of a Pelton uh, turbine installation, because this is usually utilized in uh, locations where the head available is very high. So it's uh, fortunate that uh, in such a situation we can operate uh, at constant atmospheric pressure. So the casing can be quite uh, lightweight. Now, uh, here is a look at um, an actual uh, Pelton wheel installation by uh, Siemens uh, Hydropower. And uh, uh, this design can be seen to be uh, quite different uh, from what we just uh, saw. Okay? So in fact, you can see that instead of a single jet that we saw before, this uh, uh, layout has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six jets. Uh, around the periphery of the wheel. So the advantage is to uh, having six uh, jets around the periphery is that um, uh, the water actually uh, can hit uh, the runner at more than uh, one location. And hence the runner actually more or less runs full in this case, which is an advantage in contrast to this situation where the water hits only one uh, bucket. So the rest of the runner is actually uh, not uh, developing any work. So by distributing the water around the uh, circumference of the runner, uh, the stresses, mechanical stresses on the, on the runner is also uh, reduced. Uh, asymmetry in the mechanical stresses is reduced to a large extent. That is a big advantage. The second advantage is that you know, in case the flow needs to be uh, reduced or uh, increased, we can turn off or turn on one of the jets uh, to accomplish this with the minimal flow losses instead of using the spear that we, um, that we saw in the previous illustration. So having multiple jets in a Pelton wheel uh, has uh, several advantages uh, and this is uh, invariably, invariably utilized in many of the Pelton wheel installations that are in operation today. The most uh, the modern installations all have uh, multiple jets. In addition to having multiple jets, another uh, uh, feature that is uh, uh, quite widely used uh, these days is the double overhung design of the Pelton rotor. As can be seen here, 
uh, in a, a normal situation, you would have a tension wheel uh, mm -hmm. rotor like this, where the water jet, uh, one or more of the water jet hits the, uh, the runner, and the runner shaft is connected to the generator. Now, uh, this actually um, uh, is a single overhang design and uh, better mechanical balancing and better mechanical stress distribution can be achieved if we add another rotor on, another, on the other side uh, of the generator. So uh, both these shafts can actually run the generator and this results in more uniform distribution of the mechanical stresses. Now, uh, the power that this runner has to develop is half of what it was uh, doing before and the stresses are also more uniformly balanced and the uh, axial thrust on the shaft is also now zero because the axial thrust uh, acts in opposite directions on these uh, two rotors so it is mechanically uh, well balanced so for the power that generates this is extremely compact and a very very efficient design so modern installations use both these uh, strategies to improve the efficiency of uh, pelton turbine and there are multiple jets as well as the double overhang rotor design. So here we have a look at uh, the um, uh, the bucket in a Pelton runner. So it's quite clear that these are massive uh, buckets and they are capable of generating um, uh, uh, hundreds of megawatts of uh, power. And as can be seen, the bucket is uh, shaped like uh, two cups with a ridge in the middle. So the water jet uh, impacts the, the ridge in the middle, then flows through uh, both the cups on both sides of the, uh, the cups on both sides of the ridge, and then comes out like this. So the turning angle usually is about 150 to 160 degrees. So it's uh, quite a lot of turning, and uh, that uh, generates the power um, uh, that is uh, that is expected. And more importantly, uh, uh, since there is only change in direction of the water and hence change in momentum, the pressure remains constant. Okay, so let us summarize what we have seen so far. Uh, Pelton wheel is usually uh, used for high head and low discharge uh, installations. And um, uh, the pressure remains constant because uh, uh, there is only a change in direction of the uh, water and uh, the axial velocity remains constant, the relative velocity also remains constant. So, Pelton wheel is an impulse machine. Uh, the water jet, as uh, we already mentioned, leaves the nozzle at atmospheric pressure. So, the entire turbine operates at atmospheric, at atmospheric pressure. Uh, consequently, the rotor need not run full and the casing can be lightweight. Although making the rotor run full by uh, using different, uh, by using multiple jets, uh, has its own advantages, so that is uh, practiced uh, in um, uh, real life applications. Yet another advantage with the Pelton wheel is that it is ideally suited for silty water, as the buckets can be removed easily for servicing to fix the damage caused by the silt. Now here is a blade element of, uh, uh, of the, one of the buckets. And as uh, we mentioned earlier, the water enters and impacts the central ridge and then flows on both sides. And it is uh, turned through an angle of uh, gamma, uh, gamma 2, as uh, shown here. So if we apply Euler's uh, turbine equation uh, to this uh, blade element, we have P equal to rho times Q times V theta 1 U1 minus V theta 2 U2. Uh, U1 is equal to U2, so that can be taken outside. And um, uh, we can actually uh, simplify this uh, using the velocity triangle shown here. And finally show that the power is actually uh, equal to rho q u times v1 minus u times 1 minus cosine gamma, uh, gamma 2. Okay, notice that the relative velocity also remains constant here. C2 equal to C1 equal to v1 minus u. Now with everything else held constant, the power produced is a maximum uh, when gamma 2 is equal to uh, 180. So in this case, this becomes 1 minus of minus 1 plus 1. So that uh, becomes equal to 2. So the power is a maximum uh, when gamma 2 is 180. But this is practically not viable since uh, the water exiting a bucket will hit the following bucket. So this is uh, counterproductive. So typically, uh, gamma 2 uh, is between 155 to 165 degrees. 
and uh, this uh, results only in a 2% reduction from the maximum power so it's quite uh, quite acceptable okay so that is the value that is used uh, now with everything else held constant the power is a maximum when the blade speed is half of uh, v1 okay so we simply take this expression differentiate this uh, with respect to u and set the derivative to zero so we can show that uh, the power produces the maximum when the blade speed is half of v1 and it must be borne in mind that v1 is equal to vj which is the uh, velocity of the jet as it leaves the nozzle so uh, the power is a maximum when the blade speed is half of the uh, jet speed okay and uh, since the uh, overall height um, of the uh, Uh, available to the turbine uh, rotor is h uh, the speed uh, with which the water leaves the nozzle uh, is the square root of 2 dh at least theoretically uh, without in the absence of any losses so uh, with u equal to vj over 2 we can rewrite this expression as follows v max equal to rho q times vj square over 4 times 1 minus cosine uh, gamma 2 as we mentioned earlier the output power uh, may be controlled uh, by controlling the discharge uh, using the spear uh, multiple jets actually is a much better option for a much better strategy for controlling the uh, discharge now if we denote the uh, length of the pen stock as l uh, sub p its diameter as d sub p and the velocity of the fluid in the pen stock as vp and apply bernoulli's equation between the free surface of the dam reservoir and the pen stock uh, nozzle exit uh, we get the following where we are accounting for frictional losses in the pen stock pipe so this is the friction factor in the pen stock pipe so we are accounting for frictional losses in the uh, pen stock pipe okay so q is the flow rate ap here is the cross sectional area of the pen stock so from this we can get an expression for vj which uh, looks like this vj square equal to 2gh minus uh, fl over dp times q square over ap square so in the case of uh, uh, an ideal flow where there are no losses vj is uh, equal to uh, root 2gh as before now if we further set uh, the blade speed uh, to be half of the jet speed then we get uh, the power as uh, rho times q over 4 times uh, vj square times 1 minus cosine gamma 2 okay rho times q times vj square over 4 times 1 minus cosine gamma 2 now notice that in this case uh, if we increase the flow rate uh, the power increases as a result of uh, this term here but the power uh, decreases as a result of the uh, q square term here which appears as a negative sign so uh, this increases the power whereas the term in the square bracket as a, as the as an opposing effect so which suggests that there must be an optimum value for q that gives a uh, maximum power okay so the everything else remaining the same the power increases as q increases but the term in the square bracket Uh, opposes this effect because the jet velocity decreases on account of the head loss in the pen stock. Okay? So basically, the power uh, contains a product term q times v j square. So when we increase the flow rate, this increases, but uh, in the because of the uh, friction losses uh, which increase with q, uh, the jet velocity decreases. So v j square decreases, q increases, which suggests that there must be an optimum value for q. so we differentiate this expression with respect to q and set the derivative to zero and we can get the optimum flow rate to be this and the jet velocity in this case to be 4/3 uh, times gh so the the theoretical value is uh, square root of 2 gh now we have 4/3 the uh, gh which uh, suggests that the effective head that is available uh, uh, in this case is 2/3 uh, gh and the head loss due to friction is 1/3 uh, gh so uh, this uh, value of uh, flow rate uh, gives the maximum power with everything else remaining constant let us now look at uh, one example involving the uh, pelton turbine the problem statement is uh, given here effective head is given flow rate is given 
we also introduce a couple of new uh, terms in this uh, example, nozzle coefficient, which accounts for losses in the nozzle. Notice that in this derivation, we accounted for nozzles in the penstock pipe, but uh, I'm sorry, we accounted for losses in the penstock, but not in the nozzle itself. So losses in the nozzle uh, uh, may be accounted for uh, by using a nozzle coefficient. Uh, the deflection, flow deflection angle is given and the velocity coefficient in the bucket uh, is also given here. And we are asked to calculate efficiency of the turbine, nozzle diameter and uh, number of buckets in the wheel. Okay, so uh, the jet velocity Vj, which is usually square root of 2g times he, is now cn times square root of 2g times h e, which works out to 75.19 meter per second. Uh, the blade speed in this case may be calculated uh, using the given value, the radius and the uh, RPM as a 2 pi uh, or n divided by 60, which uh, is 35.34 meter per second. So the relative velocity at the inlet c1 is equal to v1 minus u, that's equal to 39.85 meter per second. Also, uh, v theta 1 equal to v1 in this case. So the velocity triangle in this case is very simple, as you can see here. Uh, C1 is equal to v1 minus u, and v theta 1 is equal to v1. Entire component is tangential along the u direction. And the relative velocity at exit, which normally would have been equal to C1, is now Cv times C1, that is 0 0.9 times C1, so that is 35.87 meter per second. Therefore, V theta 2 is equal to, from this velocity triangle, uh, V theta 2 equal to U minus C theta 2. So, U minus C theta 2, and the C theta 2 is nothing but C2 times cosine 180 minus gamma 1, that is the blade angle, 180 minus gamma 1. So if I substitute the numbers, we get this to be 2.83 meter per second. Notice that uh, both uh, V theta 1 and uh, V theta 2 are in the same direction. So there is no change in the sign uh, of V theta 2 in the Euler's turbine equation. So if we substitute the numbers, we get this to be 10,740 kilowatts. The efficiency is the uh, uh, is the actual power divided by the uh, hydraulic power, which is rho g q times he, and we get this to be eighty seven percent. It's also given that um, uh, in the problem statement uh, that uh, five uh, jets are used in this installation. So we take the uh, uh, total flow rate and divide that among uh, five jets. So, and then based on this, we can evaluate the uh, diameter of each jet uh, using this expression, which gives us 0 0.1193 meters for the diameter of the jet. Uh, know, uh, knowing the uh, diameter of the runner and the diameter of the jet, we can use a correlation to calculate the number of buckets that are used uh, which may be written like this, where D is the uh, diameter of the runner or wheel diameter, DJ is the jet diameter. So uh, this tells us that the number of buckets uh, needed in this uh, case on the runner is 21. That concludes our discussion on the Pelton wheel. Uh, uh, what uh, we will do next is to say a few things about uh, uh, turbine specific speed, selection of turbines and uh, turbine specific speed. In the case of turbines, um, in contrast to centrifugal machines where we used uh, the um, uh, uh, specific speed uh, re relating Q and H, here we use the power specific speed which relates the BHP and the head, uh, head H or effective head HE. Okay? So this is a more uh, meaningful metric for turbines and it is uh, defined in this manner. Note that this is dimensionless and all the quantities here are used with their appropriate uh, SI units. Uh, BHP here is of course the efficiency times the hydraulic power, which is rho q g times he, where he is the effective head. As uh, we mentioned before, this is obtained by uh, eliminating the rotor diameter between uh, the dimensionless head uh, coefficient ch 
and the power coefficient Cp. The, uh, the reason for uh, uh, preferring this uh, form of specific speed or specific speed for turbines is as follows. In any practical application, the initial decision making uh, would be based on known quantities such as available head, the speed of the rotor, because uh, in this case, the turbine runs a generator, which is then used for generating electrical power. The speed of the rotor actually is related to the supply frequency. Okay, normally uh, the voltage output voltage is either 50 or 60 hertz, and uh, the RPM of the rotor is related to the supply frequency and the number of poles in the generator. Okay, so uh, one uh, does not really have too much freedom in selecting the RPM, it cannot just be any arbitrary number. So, the known quantities during the decision making on the available head the speed of the rotor and the power that uh, it's expected to uh, produce. Uh, basically, we know the flow rate, so we probably know the power that it is expected to produce at the size of the rotor and the type of the rotor are both not known. So that is what needs to be selected, okay? Both the type and the size of the rotor. Okay? So what is normally done is using the known quantities, we evaluate the power, uh, the, uh, power specific speed and uh, then uh, we go to a chart like this, which lists the different uh, types of turbines and associated uh, power specific speed and the peak efficiency for that we can expect for each case. Okay, So based on this chart or based on this table, we select the type of turbine we want, a number of jets uh, for a Pelton wheel or low speed Francis turbine, uh, medium speed, whatever. We select the type of, uh, turbine, type of turbine from this. And then we go to the dimensionless characteristics of that particular turbine, okay? So once the, we have the dimensionless characteristics of the uh, particular turbine, we uh, select the maximum efficiency point and the corresponding uh, uh, quantity from the dimensionless characteristic, which could be, for instance, Cp. So uh, once we know the value for Cp, uh, we can actually evaluate uh, all the uh, other quantities. For instance, once you know the value for Cp, we go back to the definition of Cp. Uh, now, in this particular case, once we know the value for Cp from the turbine characteristic corresponding to the maximum efficiency point, uh, we know BHP, we know density, we know omega, only D remains to be calculated, so we can calculate that uh, using this equation. So uh, once we have the dimensionless characteristics, uh, we, the specific speed may be used to select the type of turbine and the dimensionless characteristics may be used to actually size the uh, rotor. So we select the type of turbine, then we size the rotor using the dimensionless uh, characteristic. So the size of the rotor may be evaluated for different types of turbines from their characteristics. So for a given application, a turbine of appropriate shape and size may then be selected. So, uh, using the known quantities, we uh, calculate NSP, then we use a table like this to select the type of turbine. We then go to the uh, dimensionless characteristics of this turbine and select the value for, say, Cp from the uh, point of uh, corresponding to the point of maximum efficiency, and then evaluate the runner diameter. Once the uh, runner diameter is known and the speed is known, uh, and the angular uh, speed is known, the RPM is known, the blade speed may then be calculated, the jet speed is then twice the blade speed for optimum power in the case of a Pelton turbine, and we can just go on like this, okay? Although we have stated this in very simple terms here, selection, turbine selection is actually um, much more detailed and uh, involved, and is usually uh, discussed uh, uh, in, in greater depth in a full-fledged course on turbo machines. So we will not be doing that here. Another uh, aid that we have for selecting uh, turbines, uh, given for example, the head and the Q, would be, uh, would be a chart like this. And uh, notice that, you know, this chart broadly summarizes some of the points that we mentioned earlier that Pelton turbines are used for high heads and uh, low flow rates. And Francis turbines are used for medium head and medium flow rates. 
and capillary turbines are used for low heads and high flow rate. Okay. So we see that in um, uh, in this chart also that the specific speed of Pelton wheel uh, is small because it has a high head, and uh, the specific key is speed of Francis turbine. Uh, lies in the middle mid range, and the specific speed of the uh, Kaplan turbine uh, is high because the head is low. And this uh, chart also uh, helps in determining or selecting the type of turbine, number of jets, and so on for a particular installation where H and Q are generally known. So this completes our discussion of uh, hydraulic turbine.